Math lesson number 43, Reasoning and Proofs. In mathematics, reasoning is the process of drawing logical conclusions based on observations, evidences, or stated assumptions. So in this example, we have the Fibonacci sequence. So let's observe the Fibonacci sequence. Let's have some patterns of the Fibonacci sequence. So as we can see, the next term is taken from the sum of the two preceding terms. So for example, this 2 is taken from 1 plus 1. 3 is taken from 1 plus 2, and so on and so forth. Now that's one observation. Now based on that observation, we will have some conclusions. The last term here is 34, therefore the next term is 55. Because 21 plus 34 is 55. So that's one conclusion. Another thing is that 56 will not be a term in this sequence. That's one conclusion also. Why? Because 34 plus 55 will not be 56. Therefore, 56 will not be a term in the sequence. Another thing is that the term before 1, I mean the term before 0 is 1. Why 1? Because, as you can see here, 2 minus 1 is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, therefore 1 minus 0 is 1. So, if we have a term before 0, that is supposedly 1. So, these are the conclusions taken from the observation. Now, once again, the process of getting conclusions from the observation is called reasoning. Now, there are two types of reasoning, inductive reasoning and deductive reasoning. Let's have first inductive reasoning. So, inductive reasoning is reasoning where conclusion is obtained based on observation to get specific ideas. So, meaning to say, we'll gather specific information, specific ideas to arrive at a certain conclusion, at one conclusion only. So this may be represented by an inverted triangle where the side above symbolizes the specific ideas and the vertex below as the general idea. So let's have this representation. So this side here represents the specific ideas. Now going to a certain conclusion, that's the general idea. So that is inductive reasoning. Now, inductive reasoning is most, mostly applied in finding patterns in mathematics, just like what we did in Fibonacci sequence. You know? So that is an example of an inductive reasoning. The specific ideas will be taken through observation, and the general conclusion or idea will be based on the specific ideas drawn from the observation. Now, let's have an example of that. So in the sequence 1, 2, 4, 8, 16 so on what will be the next two terms now let's have a specific ideas based on observation so let's observe the, the pattern of the sequence so the term is taken by multiplying the preceding term by 2 so let's say 4 4 is taken from 2 times 2 2 is taken from 1 times 2 8 is taken from 4 times 2 16 is 8 times 2, and so on. That's the first observation. Next, 16 is the last number that is visible in the sequence. So this one is 16, so that's one observation also. And that is a specific idea. Next, 16 must be multiplied by 2, and then multiplied by 2 again. Because that's a pattern. Now, after getting these ideas, we will arrive at a certain conclusion that the next two terms are 32 and 64. So that is the main or the general idea. And this one came from the specific ideas based on observation. That is inductive reasoning. Now let's go to deductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning is reasoning where conclusions are obtained 
based on the general idea. In other words, from general idea to specific conclusion. So, you have the general idea already. We need to get specific conclusions based on that idea. Now, this may be represented by a triangle where the side below symbolizes specific conclusions. And then, the vertex above this one here as the general idea. So, from the general idea to the specific conclusions going down. That is deductive reasoning. Now, deductive reasoning is commonly applied in proving in mathematics. So, deduct inductive reasoning is mostly applied in patterns, finding patterns. Deductive reasoning is in proving mathematics. Now, in proving, specific ideas or conclusions must be drawn from the general idea itself. These specific conclusions are needed to prove the general statement. So, sometimes we need to prove the general statement and in proving the general statement, we need to have specific conclusions. Let's have an example. Prove that if 2x plus 3 is equal to 13, then x is equal to 5. So, this is the general idea. This one here. If 2x plus 3 is equal to 13, then x is equal to 5. So, that's the general idea. Now, how are we going to prove that? So, we need some specific ideas. So, let's have the first one. Uh, by the way, we will be using here a two-column proof. We're in the first column is the statement and the second column is the reason part. Okay? So, let's have the first specific idea under this statement column. So, 2x plus 3 is equal to 13. That's one observation or specific idea based on this. And the reason behind that is that is given. Next, we'll subtract negative 3 because we need to isolate x here to get 5. So, we need to subtract negative, I mean, subtract 3 on this side and we need to subtract 3 also on the other side. And that is subtraction property of equality. Now, simplifying that, we have 2x is equal to 10. Okay? So, 2x is equal to 10 is because of the subtraction property of equality. That is the second specific idea. The last specific idea that we'll be needing is that 2x over 2 is equal to 10 over 2. So, we need to divide both sides by 2 and the reason of, for that is division property of equality. Simplifying that, we have x is equal to 5. Therefore, the symbol is this, for therefore, if 2x plus 3 is equal to 13, then x is equal to 5. So, we need specific information to prove the general idea. And this specific information actually came from the general idea itself. And that is deductive reasoning. So, in the example statements are the specific ideas drawn from the general idea that if 2x plus 3 is equal to 13, then x is equal to 5. The specific statements are needed to prove the general idea. Okay, let's have another example. Angle A and angle B are complementary angles. The measure of angle B is 10 less than the measure of angle A. Prove that the measure of angle A is equal to 50 and the measure of angle B is equal to 40. So this one is the general idea. So we need to prove this. Now, Let's have first the specific idea under statement A plus B is equal to 90. Why? Because according to the statement here, angle A and angle B are complementary angles. So therefore, A plus B is equal to 90 because that is the definition of complementary angles. Next, 
b is equal to a minus 10 and that is given because the measure of angle b here is 10 less than the measure of angle a so that is given next a plus a minus 10 is equal to 90 because b is a minus 10 so we substitute here b I mean a minus 10 to b so a plus a minus 10 is equal to 90 and the reason of that is substitution now simplifying that we have a plus a to a and then transferring this to the other side we have 90 plus 10 100 and the reason of that is simplification and addition property of equality so why addition property of equality because we need to add 10 here and 10 on the other side to remove this negative 10 now after that we need to divide both sides by 2 and that is division property of equality as a result we have a is equal to 50 so the measure of angle a is 50 now in order to get b we need to use this b is equal to a minus 10 and substitute 50 to a so b is equal to 50 minus 10 b is equal to 40 b is equal to 40 and the reason of that is substitution therefore the measure of angle a is equal to 50 and the measure of angle b is equal to 40 so again we use specific information coming from the general idea to prove the general idea itself that is deductive reasoning and this kind of proving uses two column proof again the first column has this statement and then the second column for the reason so this is a two column proof